welcome to, yes, we're recording, welcome to Hawkeye Episode 3, Echoes, Thoughts. So, as usual, there will be spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I might discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes, especially in videos made by New Rockstar, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, Magic Mackie, Emergency Awesome, Real James, and Jesse Gender. Not saying all of them did one or more videos on this specific episode, or even show, just that they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watched, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and the episodes of this show that have aired. And yes, that includes this episode. Now, I have read all issues of Matt Fraction and David Aha's Hawkeye. Love it. And, yeah, I, this is another episode where the pacing sometimes could be better. There, that helps. And... Right, so, there are not really any broad performances in this episode. Parts of the episode are definitely dark. I thought the acting was really good from everyone involved. And I think the episode lives up to its potential based on the concept it explores. And it has great character moments for pretty much all of the characters featured. Everyone behaves in character. Now, Nando V Movies pointed out that grief appears to be a main theme for Phase 4 of the MCU, and yeah, you know, so far, so let's see. Episode 1 is about Hawkeye's grief over Natasha. Gotta stop calling her Black Widow now, because that's technically Yelena. Ah, one second, I think. There, that's better. And Episode 1 is also about Kate Bishop's grief over her father, this episode is about Maya's grief for her father now. And the episode fares well on diversity. You know, with the, yeah. Maya being the first MCU character who is both deaf and Native American. No. And, and yeah, Wisecrack pointed out the Phase 4 is about millennials, and yeah, I... Kate is a millennial, and they have some fun with that, which... Yeah, you know, I'm... I'm I, th I think I read somewhere... What was it? Well, I did read somewhere. I, I forget where it was. Someone pointed out that for a lot of people, the word millennial appears to just refer to a young person that the person using the word millennial doesn't like. But there are definitely some, you know, not all of the things said about millennials contradict each other. And some of the ones that don't, you know, yeah, I, I don't, th I think people gotta lay off millennials. I'm, I'm not technically a millennial myself, but yeah, seriously. But you know, it is possible to have some fun with that without being really nasty about it. And I do think the show does a good job of that. So, we open in 2007 with child Maya in school, unable to hear, trying to read lips. I quite appreciate that at one point, like, she's, she's trying to read her teacher's lips, and it just says words. I think even in parentheses, just to make sure it's we understand. No, she she's saying words. I don't I don't know. What what do you want from me? You know? That is a very Matt Fraction David Aha Hawkeye run kind of thing. Like when when Hawkeye when Clint isn't you know the the tracks of Mafia are Eastern European and you know sometimes they will speak in their in the in their first language and 
you know, we're, we're seeing things through Clint's perspective, which is why when he goes deaf, it's only the words, if, if he can read your lips or you're using ASL, he knows what's being communicated, but otherwise, no. And, yeah, so he does not know what the Eastern Europeans are saying in their own language, so it just says in, in the word bubble, I forget if it's parentheses or it might be like, maybe there's asterisks on both ends, but yeah, it'll say Eastern European, I guess, or some something like that, so yeah. And the teacher goes to tell Maya, pay attention, but realize she's actually done some of the schoolwork without help because she's so smart, and I forget who, but someone on YouTube pointed out that she's actually the youngest in that classroom. Everybody, all the other students are older than her, which points to that she's so smart that she's been moved ahead, moved up in, you know, she's the, the, yeah, she's in a class that's, that should be above her, her, for her age. And, I mean, I'm not surprised, but I do just have to say the show does an excellent job getting our empathy for Maya. You know, you might say, oh, it's a dirty trick, starting with, you know, who's who's not going to empathize with, you know, a, a, what is she, like six, a deaf six-year-old, obviously, but nevertheless, I do think they do a really great job. And Maya's father tells her they can't pay to get her into a school for, for deaf kids, and Maya watches the others in karate class, like, memorizing moves and, and figuring out um, weaknesses, and Maya wins the fight against the bigger kid. I really like that she, you know, the MCU has drawn some criticism for having female characters beat up male characters who have more muscle mass than they do. This was especially something that I want to say Iron Man 2 with Natasha yeah the there was some you know the the I want to say it was the blockbuster buster pointed out that the you know Avengers 1 did a better job making it make sense but yeah in that first movie you know so here I appreciate Maya you know clearly Maya doesn't have as much mu as much muscle as much weight as this black kid that she fights but she uses that to her advantage she you know she she gets behind him and then she pushes him because the moment that she pushes him as long as like you know she's in a position where it's gonna knock him off balance you know and at that and yeah when, you know when when she pushes him his weight works against him not for him you know if he manages to punch her or kick her he can put a lot of weight behind that but if she knocks him over then he's gonna fall as yeah and yeah that has to be kingpin complimenting maya non-verbally that's um i that's almost definitely his voice and the the you know you've got the, the hand you've got the cuff link and the you know you very briefly see the the kind of i'm gonna say it's a tuxedo that he's wearing that that has to be him you know i i haven't watched that show but just from clips like it's a very distinct look and we go closer to the present. She continues to easily beat people that you could imagine would be her match because she's that good. And we see that Ronan killed a bunch of people that she works with, including her father. That's why she wants revenge, as some had guessed. I appreciate, you know, in the, in the comics, she's lied to about who killed her father. And I... I think it works in the comics. I haven't read them, but... I haven't read comics featuring Echo, I'm pretty sure. I think in the MCU, it would, like, you know, we're already expecting Yelena to show up and be like, you killed my family member, so, you know, let's not have, you know, get in line. Let's not have an entire line of, of characters coming up to Clint saying, you killed my family, you know, and for him to have to explain every single one and, and it is legitimately like, of course, someone he killed 
as Ronan would want revenge. And you know, some some people theorize that this is not Clint's Ronan. It might be Jack's Ronan, which I forget if Jack is Ronan. I, I think so. I think Ronan. I, yeah, yeah. Ronan is a title in in the or yeah. Anyway, in in comics, if you don't read comics, you might not know. But in comic books, like tons of people have gone by the same you know character name. There are a lot of you know if, if you know if you've watched Spider Verse, you already know that there are multiple Spider Spiders Man. But that's like there's there's tons in in general, and that's not even looking into like uh, the multiverse and such just you know the the title will pass between different different people and yeah it seems like you're mad at me I know it doesn't look like it but you know you'd be lost without me right <laughs> you go Kate that is that's the kind of confidence that yeah well, I think you both owe apologies. I mean, that is good advice. I just, I love the fact that he walked up to her and asked for advice. Like, just, and she's not like, you tied us up. You think I'm going to give you a right now? She's just like, I mean, I think you both owe apologies. It just, it's such a great, yeah. And we're getting, I, I really like that we get more Kazi, you know, an earlier episode I wasn't sure how much we were going to get of him but here he's a full-fledged character look at her she's nine it's an almost a direct quote from the comic and Maya chokes Kate flashing back to Ronan killing her father Clint actually used the stuffed bear as a weapon awesome fight between Maya and Clint she is incredibly badass that's holy crap like I mean I knew she was gonna be but Wow, that was that was a fight scene. And she crushes his hearing aid under her boot. In the comics, Kazi actually flirts with Kate and she flirts back. I'm guessing they won't do that here, considering this is how they meet. You know, in to to be fair, to be fair to Kate in the comics, she has no idea that Kazi is who he who we know he is. And Clint uses an arrow to non lethally get rid of Kazi and then free Kate. He uses a few arrows as stabbing weapons. That really was a great, like, it just, I, did it, did, I, I'm not sure it even, like, hit him. It just, like, grazed by him. And then it cuts her, you know, restraints. The, I, I guess it's just tape by this point, I forget. I was doing fine. Okay. And we get the car chase that we saw in the preview, and which is from the comics. And unlike the preview, the sound editing underlines that Clint literally can't hear what Kate is saying. Glorious long take during the car chase. And Kate blew up one of the cars with an arrow. Thankfully, not the one with Kazi, and Kate attacks the car with Kazi and with Christmas trees. You know, like it's this arrow that, like, gra you know, it, it spits out wires that grab these Christmas trees nearby, and like they all bunch up in front of it. This is a very fun way to, yeah. And the two cars are side by side, and Kate grabs her bow back. Priorities. I appreciate that Kate having to use trick arrows. When Clint like explicitly says they shouldn't, is explained by them running out of regular arrows during the fight inside. The trick arrows we see them using in the car chase would have been much less useful during the fight in the in the warehouse than the regular arrows. So of course Clint, you you know, yeah. And Kate fires a normal arrow. Clint used a pim arrow to make it grow to giant size and. You know, various YouTubers have pointed out, you know, the the Hawkeye and Ant-Man did fight together in civil... It's, yeah. Help each other fight the, the other side, so... You do not want to see what this arrow does. Trust me. Good bluff. And, you know, the... the someone... One of, one of the YouTubers pointed... One of my fellow YouTubers pointed out that the... You know... Okay, so it's a USB arrow, it's not, like, sharp, but the way it, like, just, 
you know, it doesn't like hit him and like hurt a little. It just, boink, you know, bumps off the the. It doesn't bump him off, and this was the same guy who, with his bare hands, smashed like a car window in I want to say episode one. So, yeah, there's there's something about him. He's yeah, superhumanly strong and endurable. And both of the Hawkeyes jump off the bridge. Okay. This looks bad. Oh, we gotta walk the dog. He's been cooped up all day. Yeah, I just said... Uh, hey, we're communicating. <laughs> she's just... She's... Uh, I, I... I'm really glad we have Kate Bishop in the MCU. She's just... The, the, this kind of energy, this, yeah, we've got so many broody, you know, cynical characters in the MCU. Let's, let's have some that are, I really hope that she spends some time with, I want to say her name was Katie from Shang-Chi, you know, Aquafina's character. They would definitely have, like, there, there's definitely some, some fun there. And possibly Dr. Darcy Lewis. That would also, yeah. And Kate hears what the, Nathaniel says over the phone, writes it on paper so Clint can respond to it. Very sweet of her. I think I'll be back in the next day or so. The amount of episodes left disagrees with you on that. If every episode is really going to be a day. And yeah, Kate feels bad for Clint for this whole situation. And Kazi says his uncle wouldn't, or her uncle, well, whatever, uncle, wouldn't be happy if he knew how bad they were doing at being low profile. And yeah, I mean, uncle, that has to be, that has to be Wilson Fisk, Kingpin. That, I, I don't know who else. I, I think, considering that we didn't get Mephisto and the... Hmm, actually, come to think of it, I guess that is the only, like, really major... The, yeah, there were WandaVision on In WandaVision, there were characters that were theorized to be on there. And for sure, there were a lot of references that seemed to be pointing to Mephisto. Yeah, I guess Loki also... You know, yeah, for sure, some people had guessed that Mephisto was going to show up on there. Yeah, I... You know, a lot, a lot of people are going to be really frustrated if this is another fake out, considering how how clear a reference. And Kate draws the costume that he has in the comics, even says it should be in purple. And you know, Clint explains why he doesn't wear that, but we do know he's going to wear purple before this show is over. My wife would divorce me if I put something like that on. And Clint says he's not a role model to anyone, and Kate points out he's protecting her, a stranger. And Kate goes over some possible names for Pizza Dog, and for a while it's, like, not in favor of them. And then she says, Pizza Dog, and yeah, Pizza Dog likes the name Pizza Dog. Kazi works for Sloan? Sydney. Sloan is here. And Jack holds the Ronin sword to Clint's throat. That's quite an ending. And the end credits show both of the Hawkeyes flipping coins and bottles. And while Kate hits the bottle, it doesn't take any damage. But Clint manages to break the top off of his bottle. Something that he's also able to do in the comics. Comes in handy against at least one person, too. Really glad to see Kazi as a major character, and this time I caught it. Matt Fraction's title on the show is Consulting Producer. According to the end credits, I don't know enough about the deaf community to have an informed opinion on the matter myself, and if I try to share an uninformed one, that wouldn't be worth anything to the deaf community. But what Maya says to Clint is apparently something that is discussed in the deaf community if having hearing aids makes you weaker. It was great to see the two Hawkeyes fighting side by side. You know, when Clint is driving, he trusts Kate to shoot rather than, like, I don't know, I guess throwing the quiver of our arrows out the window. 
and then keep on driving. And he trusts her to fire the arrow that he then uses the PIM arrow on. If he didn't trust her to have great aim there, then his PIM arrow would be useless. And I think he might have made the right call. Like, I think if he did tell her, if you shoot an arrow up there, I'm going to shoot an arrow that's going to hit your arrow, make it grow giant, and that's going to, you know, somehow, I, I forget who said it, but someone pointed out, it seems like an arrow that size should probably have, like, destroyed the bridge, but okay, you know. I think if Clint actually told her that, yeah, she would have, like, started hyperventilating. She's just, yeah. And... I'm guessing before the show is over, Kate will find out that Clint is wrong, and perhaps she will learn from Yelena, and we'll see how she takes that... When Clint told Kate that he isn't anybody's role model, at first I thought, how could that be? His own kids, you know, it, yeah, it sure seems like his own kids idolize him, but, you know, there's that phone call when Nathan calls him, and I want to say Jesse Gender was the person who pointed out, it's actually more heartbreaking that Nathan completely understands that his father might not be home for Christmas, rather than him hoping against hope that he will. How many times has Clint not been there for special moments with his family because of Avenger stuff. And I figure this will be his arc for the show, that by the end of this, he trusts Kate to be the new Hawkeye for the Young Avengers, feeling like he's been a good role model for her, and then retiring for good this time, and being there for his family. I mean, the dude is, he, he quits... Clint Barton in the MCU retires from the Avengers at the same rate that most people change underwear. And I like that Clint in this episode does what he can to avoid killing anyone. He, he'll he like wound them, track them, you know, he, he actually, he knows he can't actually defeat Maya in a fair fight, so he fires like two arrows and they like, you know, they don't hit her, but they like pin her to the, the column, I want to say, and then you know, he gets a slight head start, and, you know, once they're in cars, she can't kick his ass, so, yeah. But, yeah, he, he specifically doesn't kill anyone, which, I mean, him killing people is why they're in this mess. If he hadn't gone around as Ronan killing all these uh, criminals, then, yeah. Now, uh, and so, you know, at least one YouTuber pointed out that Kate for sure killed the, the people in the car that she blew up. So that is, but you know, MCU heroes be killing. That's, that's, yeah. Some say it's the best episode of the three so far. I think so, yeah. Maya is definitely the show's most interesting character, as others have also pointed out. I've seen some theorize that Jack is actually going to end up helping Kate and Clint catching the actual killer. And as others have pointed out, the you know this miniseries is still a little too slow, really getting into gear. It's it's halfway through. We don't have a main villain. The the sort of like I th I th you know the murder mystery is interesting. I really like the character interactions between Kate. And Clint, I'm really glad Maya is now part of the show, but it really, like, imagine if this were a movie. Imagine if we were halfway through an MCU movie and the plot, like, the, you know, the, the, so, yeah, so, so far it's basically, like, Kate and Clint are trying to solve this mystery and... Or a couple of mysteries, I guess. And that's basically it. Like, there isn't some major thing that... Yeah. Anyway. Spoilers for the DCEU, including... Up to and including the Snyder Cut. I haven't made it a secret that I am not wild about the DCEU movies made by Zack Snyder. Among other things, I do not like that he turned Batman into 
a serial killer of criminals and someone who wants to kill Superman. Not because you can't do things like that with fictional characters, but because he doesn't do anything with it. In Justice League, both versions, Batman doesn't come across as this, as, he's not as affected by, you know, this whole thing as he should be. He tried to murder someone who saved the world once and, like, right after he stopped trying to murder him, save the world a second time and just like Batman he basically just feels like a different character he doesn't feel like someone devastated by the fact that he almost like hypothetically let's say he had managed to kill Superman Doomsday would have killed I mean I millions of people probably could anyone other than Superman have actually stopped Doomsday I'm not sure that the yeah so the the um, yeah and i think that they do a much better job of a similar thing in this miniseries clint was ronin a serial killer of criminals and this miniseries is actually about you know he's he's trying to deal with the consequences of the, the fallout of that he's trying to make sure that this doesn't go yeah you know and and it actually like we now know that some of the people you know very likely Maya's Maya's father appears to have been a criminal but that's still you know yeah there are still people really affected by that you know Clint is trying to prevent things from getting even worse. No more spoilers for the DCEU. I guess in the next episode we're gonna find out if the MCU holds as canon that Swordmaster trained swords Swordsmaster trained Clint. I think it could be pretty cool if Swordmaster became a distinct anti-hero, even outright hero in the MCU. And some say that Kang is the one who wants the watch. He's behind the tracks of Mafia. Natasha killed Ronan. What he said was true from a certain point of view. I really love that the radio changes songs every time their car like either bumps into something or is bumped in. I guess it's mostly that it is bumped into, but yeah, during the car chase. So, the first three episodes all end with two characters on the show meeting and or the audience meeting one of these, yeah, meeting a character for the first time on the show. Episodes one and three both open with a flashback that shows the background of one of the young female characters. So, I mean, maybe episode five will start like that as well and... Yeah, I have to wonder if they're going to keep, like, so, yeah, there's episodes 4, 5, and 6 I haven't, we haven't seen yet. <sighs> yeah, I can imagine they might also end. I forget exactly which, was was it maybe a Captain America the Winter Soldier that also m several episodes would end with the major character introduction. And that is, again, like, you can't really end a movie, like, or a post credit scene, maybe. But other than that, you can't really end a movie like that, but you can end an episode like that. And there's a lot of comic books that end with, you know, the 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 camera pulls back and, you know, the, the comic equivalent of that. And someone would say, just wait until they realize what my real plan is. You know, I'm behind the whole thing, that, that kind of thing. And some have pointed out that the long take is just like the long take in Children of Men in similar circumstances. I'm not going to spoil that movie, and I agree. And if you haven't watched that movie, you definitely should. Unless you're like, I don't know, under the age of 16, I guess. Then then maybe don't. Wait until you're 16 at least. But once you, once you are, definitely watch that movie. So yeah, it's, you know, the, the MCU Disney Plus shows have some problems with, you know, the, the, yeah, these shows, like a number of the movies, have a villain problem. 
you know, very, very specifically to these Disney Plus MCU shows, you know, sometimes the villain will only show up late into the show. It can be very difficult to figure out what, what are they even planning? Sometimes it seems like the people writing the show aren't sure what the plan, yeah, what, what they're planning to do. And yeah, it is, it is an issue in this episode. I, I hope by next episode they'll do a better job and by next show they'll maybe start out doing a better job but that is definitely you know and and i feel like on captain america and the winter soldier i'm pretty sure at least some of it just legit was not their fault it was like they had to change stuff because of corona so anyway but yeah absolutely love this episode i it's gonna be really difficult to wait i mean next episode of this i have to wait a week that's gonna be difficult but the Echo miniseries itself is, like, way down the line. That's going to be incredibly difficult to wait for. Holy crap, I cannot wait to get more of this character. And it's apparently, like, this is her, the actress's big break. This, like, the, the first thing she acts in or something. Wow. That is, like, immense talent. Like, I, I honestly would have guessed that she was, she, like... That she had done this before. She's she's incredibly convincing, you know that that kind of intensity and the the emotion that like like when she grabbed Kate like I mean I wasn't really expecting the show to kill off Kate Bishop, but wow that was that was intense. That really yeah and and again the the fight yeah holy crap. So, I believe that was everything that I had to say about this episode. Really, really looking forward to, to next week's episode. And, yeah, that is it for this video. So, I'm just going to... There it is. And, yeah, so, I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time.